When I was in fifth grade, I won an eating contest by eating five chicken fried steaks. I used to volunteer at the Palo Alto VA hospital to help them perform autopsies. When I lived in Australia, I used to work night shifts as a bartender, as a professional mover as well. I dropped bakery school to come to Stanford. <laughs> <laughs> One of us is lying. <laughs> and we hope by the end of our presentation you have a better idea of who that was. Today we're going to make you into the best two truths and a lie players the GSB has ever seen. Because today we're here to, to talk to you about the body language of deception. We're going to be drawing heavily on research by body language expert Carol Gomez. And with this knowledge, you should be able to spot liars in games, in interviews, in negotiations, and even presentations. We communicate a lot with our bodies. We learned earlier in the quarter that over half of the total impact of a message is communicated non-verbally. The same is true with lying. So non-verbals can be important and reliable tells. In our presentation today, we're going to start from the top and work down, detailing common cues of deception. We're going to start with the face, move to the hands, and end with the feet. Have you ever thought of wearing sunglasses for a business meeting, <laughs> for a tough negotiation, for a date? Probably not. <laughs> that will sound weird. However, so, however, some people do it. Poker players do it. Why did they do it? Because they didn't go to Stanford? Nah. They do it because they know that your eyes talk more than you want them to do. One, one thing, the pupils. The pupils are directly wired to your brain. And be because they're directly wired to your brain, there's not much you can do about it. When you're excited, they're going to dilate. If you dissimulate, not interested, they're going to retract. Focus player don't want you to see their hands through their eyes. So that's another way by which you can deceive through your eyes. When you dissimulate, typically your eyes are going to start blinking frenetically, much faster than they usually do. Or you're going to avoid eye contact altogether. Police know these cues very well. So luckily for you, in Silicon Valley, or in the US generally, where you're going to work, people don't wear sunglasses. Even though in California, you never know. <laughs> Another way where you can read people's mind through the face. Because you're a good mammal, you know the expression of the six major emotion. Smile, smiling associated with happiness, sadness, anger, disgust. But the problems of everybody know them. They're universal. So people are going to try to fake it. Let me give you two advice to hint how to detect it. The first one is the emotion shows first on the face. The first thing that's going to come. If your emotion comes at the same time as you speak, then it's a dissimulation. It's faked. So the second one is an emotion actually lasts less than a second. So any manifestation, demonstration of this emotion, if it lasts more than one second, you're probably faking it as well. One last thing. It's on your tongue. In a recent poll by a great newspaper, 4% of Americans say that they believe that uh, less of people were among the U.S. and trying to take over the U.S. government. I cannot comment on the veracity of that, but I can tell you two things. First, being called lizard is not a compliment on your honesty. <laughs> Second is your tongue is going to start under pressure to flee frenetically. In that short gif, John Kerry in a 90, minutes, 90 second testimony flips his tongue like a snake eight times. <laughs> I'll let you make up your mind about what he says, but I can tell you one thing, keep your tongue in. <laughs> Looking at the eyes and the face is not enough though. You also want to pay attention to the hands and the gestures. In particular, you want to pay attention to three things. The first is where the hands are going. When we lie, we tend to do movements with our hands that we wouldn't otherwise. Some of these include covering our mouth as if the brain was still in the body, you're lying, you might get caught, and there's consequences. So cover yourself. The second is 
we scratch our nose. And we do that because we release more adrenaline when we're nervous, when we're lying, and therefore our skin becomes itchy. We also tend to rub our neck or our ear in a reassuring reflex that we have since we were little kids. The second part is timing. Just as Rodolfo mentioned with the facial expressions, with gestures, timing is also of the essence. Every time we speak and we're gesturing at the same time, we always gesture first and then say the words. But when we lie, we usually say the words first and then do the gesture. In this video, hopefully you'll be able to see the differences and see how whenever... But I want to say one thing to the American people. I want you to listen to me. I'm going to say this again. I did not have sexual relations with that woman. Miss Lou. Do you believe him? Even if you, know, if you didn't know that he was lying, you will be able to tell that something's off. There's a difference between I did not and I did not. Hopefully by now you'll be able to tell that that difference usually implies that someone is not being completely honest. The third thing to look for is the positioning of the palms. Will you believe me more if I'm talking to you like this or if I'm talking to you like this? Our palms are a part of our body that we use to connect with other people a lot. That's why we handshake, that's why we wait whenever we, we greet people. Therefore, whenever someone is lying, it's very hard to do so with their palms exposed. So what we do is we either put them in our pockets, we just put them facing down, or we put them behind an object that may be in between us and the people that we're lying to, such as a desk. Gesturing is the most primitive way of communication that humans have. And for that reason, we tend to do the movements very instantaneously. Even when we can rehearse the words that we say when we lie, the gestures have a mind of their own, so they're more involuntary. By now, hopefully you will be able to see that if you pay attention to where the hands go, the timing of the movement, and also where the palms are facing, we say a lot without saying nothing. Well, Daniel just showed us the importance of looking at the hand gestures to detect lies. And Rudolph had mentioned the facial expressions. Joe Navarro, who's been an FBI behavioral analysis for the past 20 years and author of What Every Body Is Saying, claims that the most honest part of our body is actually our feet. And this is because when we try to control our body, we focus on our facial expressions and our hands, but we often don't rehearse our feet. So there's really four main things that you should look out for with the feet. The first is how you stand. So I'm standing here with my weight equally distributed with, between both my legs. This shows that I'm much more comfortable about what I'm saying, and I'm taking a firm stand on the subject. But if I were to cross my legs, this is a much more closed and defensive position. I'm much more uncomfortable about what I'm saying, and I'm likely to be more nervous about it. And if I were to shift my weight from side to side, or rock back and forth, this is a sign that I'm trying to calm myself. And again, I'm likely nervous about what I'm saying to you. The second thing to look out for is how often the feet are moving. So if I'm fidgeting my feet, if I'm tapping them, if I'm winding them around things, it's likely another sign that I'm uncomfortable with what I'm saying to you. The third thing to look out for is the direction of where my feet are pointing. This is an indication of my interest level and my liking towards the person that I'm talking to. So if we were to have a conversation and my feet were pointing towards the door, but my torso is still pointing towards you, it likely means that I want to exit this conversation. I'm not interested in talking. <laughs> and the fourth and final thing to look out for is this concept of ankle locking. And this is where one ankle crosses the other. And this is a sign that somebody is likely withholding information from you. For example, in therapy sessions, a lot of patients will lock their ankles as they're withholding their emotions. And in negotiations, if the person across from the table from you is locking their ankles, it likely means that they're withholding valuable concessions. 
So for all these reasons, remember that one of the most honest nonverbal communicators are actually your feet. So take a glance down at somebody's feet when you're talking to them and look out for the four signs of lying. Unbalanced stance, a lot of feet movement, the feet pointing away from you, and ankle walking. So at this point, we've really picked apart the nonverbals of deception. We've talked to you about the face, we've talked to you about the hands, and we've talked to you about the feet. Just to bring it back together, it's important to remember to view behaviors in clusters. So look for at least three signs of lying before calling foul. And if you can, think about the context of what's normal for the individual that you're observing. Now, we don't condone lying per se, but we would encourage you to use this knowledge, not only for others, but for yourself. So the next time you are at the World Series of Poker, don't forget your sunglasses to cover up those dilated pupils. Or if that's not in the cards, consider your next tough negotiation or interview situation. We'd love now to turn to questions. Uh, would love to hear anything that you would like to ask us. But first, we want to answer what might be the most burning question in the room. Who was lying? <laughs>